Intel's newest lake is Intel Alder Lake S, which is their desktop CPU coming out at the end of the year. And we have a benchmark result of the 12900K. And I think you guys are gonna be pretty impressed by the single threaded performance and also the multi-threaded performance. So let's just jump straight into it. And we have an article here from Video Cards. And the headline is Intel Core i9-12900K qualification sample benchmark results. And we're gonna go straight into this tweet here. The tweet is from one Raichu and he writes 12900K S. He said that the S is just a typo. QS is qualification sample, non overclocked in a water cooler because these CPUs get pretty hot. We've seen with the Comet Lake and Rocket Lakes, they get pretty hot, especially over 200 watts. Um, now this was tested in Cinebench R20. The single threaded performance was 810. The multi-threaded performance was 11600. So how does this compare with other CPUs? Well, we'll go to this chart here. This is from Guru3D. And uh, I've got the results on the right-hand side here uh, in terms of the single-threaded performance compared to the 5950X and Intel's last generation, which was the 11900K. So in terms of single-threaded performance, the 5950X, the 12900K is actually 26% better. And compared to the 11900K, the 12900K is 30% better. I think what you're seeing here with a single threaded performance jump is the process node jump from 14 nanometers to 10 nanometers because I think with the 14 nanometer, at least for the 10900K product anyway, it was the 5950X was still better in terms of single threaded performance. I think the 1100K was actually faster than the 5950X, but it took a lot more power to do it. So I think with the process node jump to 10 nanometers now, you're actually seeing proper gains with proper IPC increases as well. So I think that's why with the 12900K, you're actually getting 30% and 26% better than uh, these previous generation CPUs. So in terms of multi-threaded performance, the 12900K is 11% better than the 5950X. So it's relatively comparable there. But when you compare it to the 11900K, it's a whopping 96% better. And the 11900K wasn't all that great of a multi-threaded performer anyway. As you can see, it got beaten by the 10900K. The 10900K had more cores and threads. It was a 10 core, 20 thread CPU, whereas the 11900K was eight core, 16 threads. But now you add single threaded performance on top of that, plus an extra eight small cores. I think that's why you're seeing such a big gain in terms of multi-threaded performance. Now let's just jump straight into the specs here. And as you can see, um, the 12900K has eight big cores, eight little cores, and 24 threads. So those eight big cores have multi-threading on them, but the eight small cores don't. And you're also seeing that the big core boosts of 5.3 gigahertz for those one, two core boosts. So two cores are able to boost up to 5.3 gigahertz, while the all core boost boosts at five gigahertz. And the small cores, the Gracemon cores, they boost to 3.9 gigahertz, and the all core boost is 3.7 gigahertz. So it's not like a mobile chip where they're really low uh, small cores where they only boost to like say one gigahertz. These are proper small cores uh, that boost to 3.9 gigahertz. So these are pretty legit small cores. Um, as you can see, the i7-12700K is now eight big cores and four small cores. And the i5-12600K is six cores, six big cores and four small cores. So now there's actually a little bit of a difference in terms of how many cores that you're getting for the i7s and the i5s. If you recall with the uh, 1100 series, uh, what you were actually getting was uh, the i9 and i7s had both eight cores. So there wasn't all that much of a difference between the i9 and i7, and actually the i7 was much better value uh, because you had to uh, pay like an extra 100 or $150 for the i9, and all you're really getting was like about 0.3 or 0.4 gigahertz in terms of boost. So it wasn't really worth it uh, for the Rocket Lake series. Now, in terms of pricing, people have already started talking about how much it's gonna cost. Now, this is a tweet from Rogame who does a lot of leaks as well. And he says, I just wanna say something real quick. If it says 16 cores on the box, expect 16 core pricing. So people are already starting to talk about the i9-12900K costing as much as the 5950X. 
and that could be uh, the 12900K being about $750, which is a huge price increase from the i9-11900K, which I think was already about $500 or $550, if I'm not mistaken. I haven't actually checked, but um, that would be a big price increase. But uh, the thing is like, I think Intel are just going to price this based on the performance. So if it's going to beat AMD performance uh, in multi-threaded performance, it's just going to price it that way. So I think that's how we're going to see it. I think they're going to have a problem in terms of the mindset or mind share that people have when people think about uh, this in terms of how many cores and things like that. So they could think about the AMD Ryzen chips having 16 cores or 16 big cores. Meanwhile, this has eight big cores and eight little cores. So I think Intel has still has a bit of work in terms of PR, in terms of getting people to think about this as 16 cores rather than eight big cores and eight little cores. Now, what we have here is that the Intel Core i9-12900K is actually available on the black market. Uh, so someone has obviously uh, snuck out a few samples of this and decided to sell it online. But the thing is like, uh, you know, I was also wondering how people were actually testing this because they didn't actually have the Z690 motherboards. So they must be people who are already in the know or have access to these Z690 platforms. So obviously uh, somebody to do with the uh, motherboard manufacturers, uh, they might actually be buying some of these samples. So I think that's what's happening here. But um, this 12900K sample is actually selling for about $1,000 in China. Now, a question a lot of people ask me when I'm doing these CPU videos is, what motherboard am I supposed to be using? And with the Alder Lake CPU, you're gonna be using an Alder Lake motherboard, as this article says here, but it's actually the Z690 motherboard, which will come out at the end of this year in quarter four, 2021. And the original tweet here was Z690 2021 quarter four, and if you're after like the budget or mid-tier models, the B660 and the H610, this will come out in 2022 quarter one. And you're going to need this because this is on a different socket. It's on an LGA 1700 socket. Uh, we'll just go straight into this roadmap here. But as you can see here, Alder Lake, the socket is LGA 1700. So you're gonna need a new motherboard. This is the Z600 series or the Intel 600 series. And it's also going to have DDR4 and DDR5 support. It's going to have PCIe Gen 5 support now. So uh, people worried about PCI 4. Well, now you're going to have to worry about PCIe 5. Um, but going back to this memory support, this DDR4, DDR5. So it looks like at least the rumor is that on those budget mid-tier motherboards, you're going to be using DDR4 memory. And then on the higher tier motherboards, such as the Z690 motherboards, you're gonna be using DDR5. Now, it's possible that the Z690 could support DDR4 and 5, but I think DDR5 is gonna be available anyway. And I think they're just going to have DDR5 on those um, Z690 motherboards. So I think most people, if they're gonna be buying a Z motherboard, they're probably gonna be buying DDR5 anyways. So I don't think the DDR4 support will be there, but that's just my guess at the moment. Anyways, that's gonna be it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, please click the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, and I'll see you guys in the next one.